All right, our next speaker you may be familiar with, it's Dr. Douglas Green. I would like to introduce him. His, he attended St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota, receiving a BA degree in biology with a minor in sports medicine. He received his dental degree from the University of Iowa College of Dentistry. He's a member of the Academy of General Dentistry, the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, the IAMT, and the American Academy of Ozone Therapy. He is proud to com combine his loves of dentistry and sports medicine as the official dentist of the 3M champ Championship Golf Tournament each year. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Douglas Green. A lot of people ask me, all right, they have asked me over the years, you know, how do you do this? Because where I live, I live in this place called Minnesota, way up north, and you'll be able to tell that probably through my accent. I tend to drag my O's quite a bit, all right? And um, as a result of that, uh, you know, I have the unfortunate or the misfortune, if you will, of being in a very insurance-driven environment from a dentistry standpoint. We do with medicine as well, but dentistry, we really, really, really have a tough time. It's up there with like the state of Washington. I know they have a lot of problems there too. Uh, but people always, I go to con ed sessions and they say, oh, where are you from? It's in Minnesota. Oh, I hear Delta's terrible up there. So either way, um, about three weeks ago, the Academy called me because one of the speakers that they had planned for today actually had to back out. And uh, Dr. Cole said to me, he says, can you do a quick seminar? Can you do a breakout for the afternoon? So I'm like, all right, I have a presentation I can probably throw together for you. So um, basically what we're going to talk about today is basically how to be able to do a biologic dental practice within a, an insurance-driven environment. Because as those of you know, and I, I listened to this, I had a couple questions yesterday when they did the, uh, the fundamentals course. You know, I always tell people, you know, a charge what you think is fair for your services. But when you're doing, dealing with an insurance company, you know, you can't necessarily charge for that because you have this assignment of benefits and they basically decide what you can charge and what you can't charge for what you do. All right, and that, you know, when you're giving a patient a superior product to what is given to them down the road at the average Joe Schmo dental office, you know, you have, ex you know, basically extra costs associated with that. So you're going to get a hit to your bottom line if you don't figure out ways to be able to supplement that income, we'll call it. All right. Well, supplementing that income is a tricky game because, again, if you give the patient or you start making all these extraneous charges, they will come back at you and they say, hey, you can't do that. All right. So you have to learn the rules of the game. All right. So and if you notice this pretty lady standing up here next to me or she's off to the stage right now, um, this is actually my wife, Heidi, and a little bit of a hiccup there. So either way, I'm going to bring my wife, Heidi, up here to join me on stage. All right. Um, we work kind of as a team. All right. I'm the muscle. She's the brains. All right. Guys, get that through your head. All right. The woman's always smarter. All right. So she's going to help me give this presentation. All right. Because I'm going to talk about the clinical side of it a little bit. She's going to basically focus on the insurance side of it. All right. Because this, this lady, I've known her for, gosh, 30, 30 years now, hasn't it been? All right. It's been a long time. 30 years. Okay. Oh, but it only feels like a day. Oh, that was nice. I'll pay for that later. Um, either way, it's just one of those things where we hardly see each other during the day because most dentists don't want to work with their wives, all right? We don't have that problem of, you know, running into each other constantly being stepping over each other. Um, she runs the front, I run the back, and we make it work, all right? But she's becoming keenly aware of some tips and tricks we can give you to be able to help you deal with in insurance companies as well as to figure out ways to be able to still give your patients a good service not overcharge them and gouge them, but still get paid for what you do within an insurance environment. So we're going to go over a lot of that today. All right. So a little bit about who we are. All right. We are a husband wife team, like I said, and we're from Blaine, Minnesota, which is just to the north side of the Minneapolis Twin Cities area. All right. I was in practice on my own uh, up until about 2011, not on my own, but in a group practice. I went away from it because I couldn't do biologic dentistry anymore because my partners kept trying to push me out the door. All right. It was not fun. All right. But our goals here are to talk to you about dental insurance, all right? How to weather the storm and play the game with dental insurance, all right? How to thrive and coexist with insurance companies, as well as, well as how to set yourself apart to become insurance independent, all right? And I'm going to use that term insurance independent a lot, all right? Because only about 1% of practices nationwide can do what like Dr. Cole does. Um, you saw Dr. Griffin Cole this morning, first thing, and he has a, absolutely, I mean, it's like the practice I would love to have, all right? People come in, they get services, they get paid, for, he gets paid for what he does, and then they walk out the door, end of story. He doesn't have the uh, logistic hassles that we do when we deal with insurance companies. But very few people can get that or obtain that unless you work really hard or have a predecessor like he did that had set that up already for him. So, so we're going to kind of work on that. Hold on. 
You got to breathe. I don't ever breathe. You know that. Okay. Take a quick breath. <laughs> So Dr. Cole is in a great situation, and what Dr. Green's going to talk about today, and I'm going to help him. And you guys that are sitting way back there, are you back there to take a nap? Kendall, can you hear all the way back Come there? You okay? About ten rows. You can hear. All right. I see an honest person in the back back there. She's giving me <laughs> thumbs up on the nap. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is this game, right? And the way to thrive is to have a plan. So maybe you start out accepting several different insurance plans and participating in them. You gotta have an exit strategy because we can all become insurance independent and we're well on our way. Mm -hmm. So in the disclaimer here, and this is an AGD disclaimer, this is a general disclaimer, all right? I don't have any interest in anything I'm gonna talk about today. No product, no process, no anything. I'm just trying to share the things that I've learned over time as to how to do that, or we've, we've learned over time, I should say, um, as to how to deal with it effectively, all right? Um, this is based on personal experience. So if you guys take any of this home and you utilize it in your own offices, it is not law, all right? Insurance companies play different games based on the state that you are practicing in. So beware of that, all right? There are gonna be some changes or maybe some minor differences in regards to that when you guys are out, you know, go back home and do this or potentially utilize some of this information, all right? Okay, do you wanna go to the history or you want me to do it? All right, tell you a little bit about dental insurance, just in, if you guys haven't dealt with it. This is kind of just a real quick, brief history as to where dental insurance came from, all right? Originally, the first dental plan was introduced back in 1954, all right? And this was a private dental plan uh, run by the Longshoremen. I think it was out in Seattle, if my memory's correct. Um, okay, now I'm going to interrupt. What's this that Because my best thing to do is I already asked you. you that. Go. So, quick show of hands. How many of you have been in practice for less than 10 years? All right, less than five years? Okay, and how many of you participate in at least one dental benefit plan? One, two, three, four? Okay, so are you familiar with what a uh, dental benefit plan maximum is today? I see a head nodding. Give me the number. Bingo. What was it in 1954? Bingo. Mm -hmm. Let that soak in for those of you that don't know that. In 1954, a dental benefit plan maximum was $1,000. A profi, an exam, and bite wing x-rays were about 35 bucks. Let that soak in. So a tenfold increase, right, in fees, and zero dollar increase in a dental benefit plan maximum. If you're going to participate in dental benefit plans, have an exit strategy. All right. So continuing on just real quickly here, and I will go over this really fast. Um, we saw the creation of the first DHMO in 1966, and we'll go over these plans a little bit here in just a bit. Um, United Auto Workers creates the first employer-sponsored group dental plan in 1974, and this is when dental insurance started to kind of take off in our society, in the American society anyway. Um, then we got commercial insurers who started to work in in 1979. Um, we started to see the introduction of what we call dental savings plans in the early 1990s. Um, and we also had the dental discount plans that came in as well in the late 90s, all right, which is about the time that I got out of dental school, all right. So now, up in 2016, that's when basically everything really started to get piled on and it came about with the uh, old um, Affordable Care Act and such, all right? And we'll go over some of this stuff here in just a little bit, okay? So dental insurance 101 kind of things to know, all right? Um, Basically, it's a party of three. For those of you who are not involved in it, all right, you've got the dentist, you've got the, uh, the insurance company, and you've got the patient, all right? And usually it's a way for employers to be able to use pre-tax dollars to be able to help pay dental benefits, all right? Um, there's a lot of different plans that are out there for assignment of benefits, meaning where does the money go once the service is done, all right? And then you also have to worry a lot about education when it comes down to dental insurance because anybody who deals with it obviously knows, all right, these people don't know anything about it, all right? They just don't really have the experience when it comes down to dealing with it. They assume it's going to be like medical and then they're kind of shocked when it doesn't work the same way, all right? So... 
Just a quick, quick little comparison between them, all right? We know that health insurance, basically we pay our premiums, all right? Um, it comes out of pre-tax dollars in most situations. It requires co-pays when you go to a, see a doctor, all right? Um, it, basically, they start covering, other than preventive services, they cover the cost of care after the deductible has been met, all right? And it's designed to be reactive, you know, related to adverse things like car accidents or the diagnosis of cancer, what, now what have you. Um, Obviously, the recent legislative changes with the ACA has required that there's more preventive coverage. All right, dental insurance is different. Premiums are still paid, all right? But uh, you will only every once in a while have co-pays when you go in to see a dentist, okay? And those are only certain plans. And it only covers a percentage, okay, of the services that are rendered, all right? Um, again, who's dealing with dental insurance right now? Hands up, just show me quick, show of hands. Okay, who doesn't deal with dental insurance, all right? Okay. Bravo. So, because it's coming. You got a wave coming, and we all need to be prepared for it, okay? All right, but either way, it only covers up a certain percentage of the total cost, all right? It's designed to be proactive, and this is why they cover so much of preventive services like routine cleanings or x rays. They'll cover those at a higher percentage, okay? Um, there isn't a lot of legislative control over dental insurance in general, okay? Um, and this is both good and bad in a lot of different ways, all right? But they also use a lot of loopholes to be able to figure out how to not pay a bill when it comes down, okay? So, moving on to the types of dental insurance plans, okay? All right, we have a preferred provider organization, a DHMO, all right? Indemnity plans, all right? Direct reimbursement, okay? Point of service plans, discount plans, and what they call an exclusive provider organization, okay? Certain of these plans are tolerable to deal with, all right? Other ones are just like you want to avoid them altogether when you guys are going out and investigating insurances, which ones to use and which, one, or which ones to work with and which ones not to work with, okay? All right, so just a couple different things about the, the different type of plans that are out there, okay? These are just little minor bullet points, and you guys all have these in your slides, so I'm not going to just sit here and go over them over and over and over, because it really doesn't do much as far as time is concerned, okay? All right, but you still have a certain amount of maximum that you can do, $1,000 to $1,500 at most, okay? All right, DHMOs are a little bit different than PPOs. PPOs aren't bad to work with. DHMOs have a lot of restrictions, all right? Because they usually lock a patient down to one dentist, all right? and then they make you pay through the nose if you go out of that network, okay? All right. Can, can you uh, pause? I can. Pause the slide. Go. Right. So the thing with DHMO is there can be a group of participating doctors. What makes it tough is when the patient walks in with the card and hands it to you and says, well, well I've, got, I've got Aetna, for example. You do and our doctor isn't part of that network, if that patient chooses to be seen in your office, they will pay the entire amount of the bill. Not even a portion of it will be covered. And, and, and it's really imperative that you work with your administrative staff people to understand the differences between these types of plans. And that's why Dr. Green is going into so much detail with this. If you don't understand those differences, you can see that Aetna card and know that you participate in a different Aetna plan. Now, you, now they're, they're in the back, and Dr. Green is making a crown, right? And they come up front, and you say, um, or let's say three weeks later when the claim doesn't get paid on, now you send the patient a bill, now the patient's angry with you. They're not angry with Aetna. They're angry with you. So, so that's one of the big hang-ups, for instance, with a DHMO. If you're not a participating provider, you can't provide services for that patient without telling the patient they have to pay for all of it, and you need to know that. Um, and, and likewise, with all of the rest of these types of plans, it's really important as a doctor that you allow your staff, your administrative staff, to have the time to work with patients, have the time to understand each of the plans and the types of plans, because if they can work with the patient, that helps the doctor and his staff build trust with that patient, and that patient will want to keep coming back, okay? 
So, and we're going to hit on that more and more as we go. Yeah, in a few minutes. And, and it's definitely not something you want to put on the doctor. So if, is there any administrative people in here today? Good, I'm glad. Because I think you'll all agree you'd rather not have the doctor talking about it, am I right? Right? <laughs> They're all nodding their heads, all the yes. Time. <laughs> Don't talk money. Do not. You'll get us in all kinds of trouble because he just wants to do the work. And we're going to talk about that as well today. Okay, moving on with indemnity, the fee-for-service. This is obviously very popular with us. We like that. We always hear that term, fee-for-service. I've heard it in 20 years plus that I've been in practice. All right. Your payouts are still the same. It's similar to a PPO plan in a lot of different ways. All right. Um, but you have to still deal with the UCRs. This is this usual customary and reasonable fee schedule that most of our insurances kind of lock us into. All right. Um, the nice thing about this is that it does not require any pre-authorization to be able to see a specialist, which in a lot of cases is a huge problem because you send a patient over to see like a, an endodontist or an oral surgeon, all of a sudden, well, I can't see that person. They're not uncovered in my network. So, or I needed a referral to be able to do that. And it's, it's just a pain in the butt. Um, especially if they've got a rip or a toothache. So uh, direct reimbursement, this is also one of my favorites just because of the fact that it just takes a lot of the hassles out of it. All right? I know you th I think that too. It's fairly easy for you guys to work with, is it not? These are the employer, employer self-insured? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're great. Um, no questions asked. The employer pays the bill. Um, so long as we give them the right piece of paper, it's a yep. non-issue. Mm -hmm. So they know where to send the money, basically, is what it is. All right. In Minnesota, they're incredibly rare. Mm -hmm. I don't know about other parts of the country. Okay. And the beautiful thing is there are no write-offs. You can decide whatever you want for your patients. Okay. Uh, point of service plans. All right. Again, very similar to DHMOs. They're a pain in the butt to work with. All right. So, and these are just the basics of what goes on within these plans. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Frankly, I'll probably get my blood pressure going up if I do, okay? Because it is a big hassle, especially as a clinician. I don't want to deal with this stuff. It's a pain in the butt, okay? Uh, discount dental plans. This is an interesting one because discount dental plans back in the early part of the new millennium, they were terrible. I mean, they, it was basically like having somebody pay into a, it was almost like being into Costco. You'd pay a membership fee and then it would give you the ability to access dentists and get a reduced cost for what you do, which made it really easy for us, but it also created some really big hassles as far as like how we were able to go about treating people. Like one of the, pro, uh, one of the um, plans that I will mention here they used to not pay for exams whatsoever. You do a periodic exam, they wouldn't cover it at all. So you'd write off 50 bucks right then and there for an exam. So you literally would have to find something wrong with them to be able to get any money out of the whole procedure other than what you pay for the cleaning, which made for a really bad, unethical situation. And I've seen this happen a lot with doctors that I've worked with in the past. It was just a pain in the butt. They've changed a little bit now. Uh, they're a little bit more amenable to being acceptable to with fees, all right? So we don't have to write off as much now. They don't ask you to discount it as severely. And they also will work with you as far as like adjusting those fees in a lot of situations, all right? They've also allowed people that don't have access to dental care through a, an employer, or right? if their employer doesn't offer that anymore, they can go out and actually get this individually now or they can do what they've done. They started doing co-ops as well, if my memory is correct. Um, we just heard that they were starting to do co-ops between groups of individuals to be able to offer them plans. So it's kind of cool. There are some neat changes that are going on within this market, and it's actually becoming a little exciting. Um, and it, we'll touch on this a little bit. I think Heidi's going to cover it because we're also they're also starting to do this where they will manage your in-office insurance plans. A lot of people have in-office dental benefit plans, and they're up in the butt to be able to regulate. And it takes a lot of work on the part of the front desk staff to be able to do it, and they're doing it for us. All right. And then the exclusive provider organization, this is like a nightmare to deal with. I don't recommend it at all. Um, I have a couple of colleagues it that are doing though. this. Don't you want to be exclusive? Oh, no, not that exclusive. Because that's how they sell it. Yeah, because it's very locked up. It, it locks you down as a doctor and as a patient, and you have no options. So you're stuck. And again, I know a lot of bad clinicians that sign up for this because I can't get patients, and then the patients were locked into it, and I see some brutal dentistry as a result of it, unfortunately. So, all right. So, again, we're listing out the type of dental insurances that are there, that are accessible to you, types of plans, all right? Basically, the ones you see in the blue are the ones that are tolerable to deal with. Okay, pause. I'm not going to go any farther. Go. Anybody confused yet? Right. Overwhelmed? Imagine if you're the patient, right? I mean, we work with this stuff every day. So in Minnesota, um, roughly 90% of the, 
of the patient base it, uh, carries an insurance card or a dental benefit plan card and they have no idea that these differences exist. They just think they have coverage. Okay. All right, just real quickly here, I've got a couple, oh doggone it, I did it again. See if it'll go back for you guys. I had a list of just a couple of insurance providers that are out there, okay. Um, these are the companies that we'll see most commonly. Uh, the big ones, obviously Delta Dental, we see MetLife as well, um, but some of these folks have different layers. I mean, Delta alone, I have, uh, Target is big, Tiger Corp, their headquarters are in Minneapolis. We have people that come in and say, I have, I work at Target, I have Delta, all right? Okay, which plan do you have? Well, I have Delta. Okay, well, who do you work for? Well, I work for Target and I have Delta, all right? They have almost 2,000 plans, all right, for various levels of employees at different positions within the company, all right? 2,000 different Delta Dentals. All right, so it's kind of important. This is how he's getting to earlier. It's important to know what the specifics of their plan are and to learn about that. Okay, otherwise Delta, Delta is not Delta is not Delta in this situation. Okay, all right. And I'm picking on Delta just because it's the you know 300 pound gorilla in the room, so to speak, when it comes down to insurance, especially in Minnesota. All right. That's why I thought you had an interesting choice of background colors, Dr. Green. Well, it was green. That's why I thought. So sorry. <laughs> That's uh, just something basic today. So anyway, I'm going to recommend companies to avoid. This is the one that I talked about earlier where you didn't get paid for an exam, all right, and that we saw some unethical things being done. That was the particular company that I have experience with, all right. Um, here's another one that I've heard some not some great things. We'll talk about an oxymoron. Bright idea, really? I don't know. I just laughed when I heard about that company. It just was funny. It's like, oh man, that's nuts. So um, this is one that we like to use. Oh, doggone it. Did it again. A little behind. I'm sorry, guys. But you, um, do, you do have cool transitions. I do have cool right? transitions. So Carrington, so I can get it back. Carrington is one of those um, companies that we really have um, enjoyed starting to work with because they've made it fairly easy. All right. So I would highly encourage people, if they're looking to be able to do something with insurance, yet you want to get your feet wet, as he did again, um, Carrington is a good company to be able to maybe start the process with, because again, you're not having to worry about the overhead of submitting claims for patients. It's like Costco. They go out, they buy into this plan, they give you some type of reimbursement or payout when you come in. They've already gotten a discount. You don't have to give them any more, all right? You're getting them a reduced fee because you say, I'm going to accept these people, all right? You can go out with them and negotiate it if you don't like what their reimbursement rate is for a certain procedure uh, within the ADA code book, okay? But regardless, it's a game. You have to learn how to play the game. Do you want to talk a little bit more about Carrington or do you want to move on? You, sir, no, go ahead. Heidi is really the expert on Carrington. No, definitely not an expert. <laughs> Make she no knows mistake. more than and I, I do. And, and frankly, I don't want to be. But... Um, is anybody in here interested in maybe having this in your back pocket uh, to, to use for, you know, as something to say to the patient that walks up with tears in her eyes because she thought the Affordable Care Act covered her children, only to find out that what it really covers is a pediatric exam and cleaning, right? And I'm looking over here because this is where the interest lies. So if I have more interest, somebody wave their hand at me. So. One of the things that we've discovered is Carrington. Now they have several different offerings. We participate in one, and it's their POS plan, um, point of service, if you will. And um, basically what we found is it's about a 20% discount off of our fees across the board, which makes it really easy for us to talk to our patients about. And if our patient gets on the phone and calls Carrington, they can be signed up that day on the phone. It's a roughly, well, Let's go about $75 a year, you heard me correctly, a year for her or him to sign themselves up and for a family, it'll be less than $200. Um, and they pay for everything at the time of service. Carrington gives us the fee schedule, they pay before they walk out the door. Um, and it, within 72 hours of the phone call, they can use the plan. Um, it's also nice because there's no missing tooth claws uh, and there's no waiting periods. So when that mom does come up with tears in her eyes, uh, you know, you have something in your back pocket to possibly offer her 
if you choose to with a Carrington plan now. Maybe the silver lining to all of this is, wow, gulp 20% off of our fees. I've never ever, and I've done other things, I've run companies, never in my life did I think that there would be a business in the United States where somebody else got to tell us how much we make. So it's tough for me. In fact, it took me five years of him practicing to believe that he knew what he was talking about when he would come home and tell me that he was beholden to fee schedules. It is absurd. So if that's a tough pill for you to swallow, um, the exit strategy that we're gonna start talking about down the road here is you can offer your in-office membership plan. And we'll talk in more detail about that down the road. I will just plant the seed right now. Carrington will help you put that together and they will help you manage it. And we'll come back to that in a bit. Okay, can you hold your question just for a little bit? All right, just as I think they're going to want to mic you up to do that question. Okay. All right. So let's keep moving. Keep Are we supposed to hold questions for, until the Technically forum? speaking, Dr. yes. Cole, or can we take yeah. some questions today? No. It's okay. So he's gonna make, if you have a question afterwards, all right, just come up and ask Heidi or I after you're done. Okay. And it's not because that's just the format that they have for us. Okay. Okay. So we know that we have to play this game with insurance plans. Everybody who deals with them already in here, all right, knows that they create the rules, okay? They set the fees, all right? They create a subset of rules, which constantly change, and they make it very hard for dentists to be involved in that process, all right? And I can't tell you, I mean, I, how many times? Every year I get a letter from Delta about a week and a half before their annual provider meeting that is usually scheduled on a Tuesday at 2 p.m., Right? Yeah, I'm going to just cancel deal. all we my We don't even show that, him the letter so. anymore because he's crabby <laughs> for three days. Yep. Um, and, and bullet point number three, where they create a subset of rules, you know, um, and, and they don't constantly change, but they do change annually. Um, when that new CDT code book comes out, that's when you, you want to pay attention because more than likely, your dental benefit plans are changing their rules to keep up. Okay. Moving on, all right. So we talked a little bit earlier about how they control fees. This is the UCR, okay? UCR, all right, in plain English stands for usual, customary, and reasonable, all right? It's basically the fee schedule that is established by a certain fee or uh, provider for how much you can charge for a given procedure, all right? And it's, it's ironic because it's based on a geographic radius around where you are practicing. So you're in a given zip code and what they will do is they'll take all the providers within a certain mile radius and they'll average everything out and decide what you can charge for it, all right? They decide what's fair, all right? And I've got an interesting comparison here to show you guys, all right? Um, I did a UCR, or listed a UCR comparison. So granted, I don't expect you guys to see this, so I'm just going to touch on this, all right? But I've basically shown what UCR is for in-network versus out-of-network, all right, in five major politan cities, Minneapolis, Miami, New York, Los Angeles, Seattle, and then I threw in Salt Lake. I threw a sixth one in there for a reason, all right? All right, and again, you guys can look at this on the app if you want to, okay? So I'm not going to really go into the, the specifics of this because it'll just confuse everybody, all right? But I am going to compare where I live in Minneapolis, all right, which is the number 18 major city for cost of living in the United States versus Salt Lake City, which is at number 52, all right? So there's a pretty big discrepancy. There's 30 plus points in, in between the two different cities, okay? And basically... That's the difference. You see Salt Lake is in green, Minneapolis is in blue. There's barely a difference in the UCR. What they will pay you, all right, either in network or out of network for what you do. So they don't care where you live in this country, all right? They don't care if you live in New York, which has got the highest cost of living of any city, or in Minneapolis or in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It doesn't matter, all right? They form the radiuses, they decide what's going to happen, okay? But there just isn't a lot of difference, okay? You need to start thinking about dental insurance as a coupon and that's it. If you're not doing that already, make sure you are, okay? Because that's what it is. They're automatically asking you to take a discount before you even give the patient a bill. You can't charge them what you think you're worth for the services that you provide, all right? And again, they don't understand this because they think it's going to be like their medical that's going to cover up to a certain dollar amount or they're going to have to pay for a certain amount, but they don't expect it to be like what the insurance company's plan it as, all right? Okay, pause. That means breathe. Thanks. That means breathe. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. He's going to start to hyperventilate here in a minute. He's got to get some oxygen. Um, verbiage is critical. So you hear Dr. Green over here on my right 
talking about dental insurance. And you've heard me not call it that maybe but once today, am I correct? I don't believe dental benefit plans are insurance. So you'll always hear me say the phrase dental benefit plan. And I would encourage you, particularly the administrative staff that works with patients, to change your verbiage. Because we can't help them understand what they've got in their hand if we call it something it's not. It's not insurance. It is a benefit plan, okay? Dr. Green likes to call it a coupon, and you heard him reference Costco earlier. How many of you shop at Costco? Okay, there's a few. So you're familiar with how it works, right? You walk in, 50, 60, 75, 100 bucks, you pay annually, right? And then you get cheap toilet paper, right? I mean, that's basically what we do. We're paying for inexpensive paper products and big bags of coffee. At least that's at my house. So the same is true with a dental benefit plan. And that's how I, I explain it to our patients that are completely flabbergasted that after they get a crown, they still have to pay for 50% of it. I have insurance. You have a dental benefit plan, and your dental benefit plan will cover 50% of prosthodontic costs. And they discount it for you. It's important, and it's just like Costco. You paid $100, you get discounts. With a dental benefit plan, you pay your $40 a month, and you get discounted dental services. Really? I'm not even kidding. And that's when I hand them a detailed benefit breakdown and I tell them to go home and, and let that soak in. Wait, I can take this? Well, actually, you should already have a copy of it, but absolutely, I'll print you as many as you want. So, so again, I say to the doctors in the room, give your administrative staff the time and the resources to have access to this information if you're going to be in this game because it can help you build your practice. For those of you that have been in practice for less than five years, it really can. And if you give your administrative staff the tools, they build the trust that you want them to have and that you want your patients to have in your practice. Because you're, you're all awesome clinicians. I firmly believe that or you wouldn't be here today. So you've got the easy job, right? Because so long as you do your job well in the back, you're building trust with your patients. Do you want that patient to come up front and completely lose trust because they think you're gouging them? You don't. So give your administrative staff the time and the resources that they need to deliver the right message to the patient every time. Mm -hmm. and so a lot Dr. Green likes to use coupon, I say Costco. <laughs> See, we use different verges, or versions and all that. So, and educating the staff as well, because a lot of times the staff doesn't get it either. They're just like, oh, I'm just a clinician. It was just like me when I first started out. They don't get it. So spending some time and investing some time in your staff as well to be able to do that is critical. All right? Okay. So again, this is one of the keys here to be able to get people to kind of move away from the insurance, whole insurance spectrum, if you will, all right? Um, when we talk about this, all right, with our patients, they love it because people normally don't get it. And when somebody in the office takes time to be able to explain how their benefits works, that, that's half an hour is just like worth its weight in gold in most situations. This right? is part of winning the game. That, that, right, so if you're gonna, I'm sure a lot of you looked at the title of this presentation today and said thrive, how do you thrive if you're participating in dental benefit plans? You can, I, I mean, d don't think that all is lost and that, and that you're forever gonna be in mediocrity. You can still do great things. Like I said, I'm still gonna tell you to have an exit strategy, but a good way to win over your patients and get them to see the value of what they're getting done is, is to have the answers when they need them. Um, oftentimes, how often do you hear Dr. Green? Oh, countless. Right? Yeah. They're great in the back. Yeah. They take care of us. We're comfortable all the time. It's pain-free. Dr. Green tells me what he's doing throughout the whole procedure. And guess what? When I came up front, they knew what they were talking about. 
it's really critical. Yeah, and for people that have been in practice for just a short period of time, they say that what on average it takes 21 visits to the dental office before a patient actually in inherently trusts you that you're going to give them the advice that is in their best interest. All right, they don't even blink. All right, you start doing this with your patients, and I can guarantee you can cut that time in a thir to a third of what it is. All right, it's so much faster because it's instantaneous with the patient. They know that you care for you, and it has nothing to do with your dentistry. Okay, well, it has a little to do with your dentistry, but it, you know, you'll still gain gain more trust quicker with a patient when you do that. Okay, so I like using the coupon analogy. How to use this Costco? You guys can do whatever you want in your own offices, um, whatever would work for you. Okay. Um, Again, we talked about staff, all right, both front desk and clinical staff to make sure that they know, you know, kind of the ins and outs with insurance. You don't have to send them to insurance seminars, but give them some time, explain it, because once they get it, they can help guide the patient a little bit better, okay? All right, thing to remember here, if you get involved with insurance, remember that you work for the patient. You do not work for their insurance plan, all right? Absolutely not, okay? All right, so... Help them to understand how that game is played is critical, all right? Like we said, talk to the patient, okay? It's a method of payment, not a method of treatment, and the insurer did not examine the patient. They don't know. All they know is that they are trying to figure out a way to be able to not pay the claim because they don't make money if they do, okay? This is why we tell Dr. Green not to talk about it in the back. <laughs> so... The joke in our office is, Dr. Green is best with his belly against the chair, and I'm sure many of you have heard that, right? And that, that's where we want our doctors. Um, so we implore him, we beg him all the time, just don't even have that conversation. You're there to take care of the patient. And, and you're not going to change your procedure. You're not going to change what's best for the patient because their dental benefit plan does or doesn't cover something. And, and I think it's really important to remember that and, and to continue to uh, bring that up with the patient. We don't do what we do in this office because your dental benefit plan covers it or doesn't cover it. We're going to offer you treatment solutions that are good for you, um, that will keep you healthy. And, and Dr. Green's going to get into a little bit about creating value for your patients just with your practice right now. Exactly. So, and we all know these things. We've all heard them. We've gone to dental seminars talking about, you know, talk about the benefits of oral care, you know, with the rest of the body. So I'm not going to go into these, you know, a lot, especially in this group, because you guys all know it better than any other generic, you know, dentist that's out there that doesn't come to AD or, uh, IMT meetings. Okay. But we have to, you know, really emphasize some of these benefits benefits for the patients we see it. and provide them the tools get them the tools that they need all right whether it's giving them the right products um, and it doesn't have to be just dental stuff I mean we're talking you could do be, be doing probiotics you could be doing supplements you can do all these things that are still within the realm of dental care because it has to do with oral health all right but it still gives them something that somebody else isn't giving them the regular guy down the road doesn't give them okay so give them those tools all right it will help them and it will again build trust okay so Remember, insurance companies do not make money if they pay dental claims, all right? You're denying my claim. One of my favorite movies. Can, Can you guys hear that? I'm sorry, Mrs. Helginson, but our liability is spelled out in paragraph 17. <laughs> States I clear. I pay for this. Excuse me. Claims, Bob Parr. Excuse me. Where were we? I'm on fixed income. And if you can't help me, I don't know what I'll do. This is what we all want to do. I'd like to help you, but I can't. I'd like to tell you to take a copy of your policy to Norma Wilcox on Norma Wilcox, W-I-L-C-O-X, on the third floor, but I can't. I also do not advise you to fill out and file a WS-2475 form with our legal department on the second floor. I would not expect someone to get back to you quickly to resolve the matter. I'd like to help, but there's nothing I can do. I'm sorry, ma'am. I know you're upset. Pretend to be upset. <laughs> you authorized payment on the worker policy? Someone broke into their house, Mr. Huff. Their policy clearly covers them against... I don't want to know about their coverage, Bob. Don't tell me about their coverage. Tell me how you're keeping insurance care in the black. 
tell me how that's possible with you writing checks to every Harry Hardluck and Sally Sob story that gives you a phone call! I just threw that in there because, I mean, how many times do we deal with that, especially our administrative staff when they call into the, uh, hey, the dental insurance company? That, so. that, that little guy, that angry man, he kind of resembled you. Oh, whatever. All right. No. <laughs> anyway, say you quiet, Griff. <laughs> All right, so just tactics. These are a list of tactics, things they normally do to try to avoid paying claims. All right, and I won't go into these, all right, because they're all on your slides, okay? But the bottom line is that they don't care what type of dentistry you do. They don't care if you're an IOMT dentist, all right, or a natural dentist, all right? They just don't want to pay the claim, and they'll figure out whatever way they can to be able to try to throw you off because they're betting that you'll give up and just write it off before they'll actually have to pay you. So, Dr. Green, I think you can give a really quick example. Gingivectomy? And was it the crown yeah. or the implant crown? No, uh, like gingivectomies, all right? Quick little example because we have to keep moving here. I'm a CEREC doctor. I like to use CEREC in a lot of situations. We'll have patients come in. They lose a cusp on an upper molar, all right? So we can do a conservative CEREC restoration or an onlay or even a crown if we need to um, based on the condition of the tooth. But in a lot of situations, you need to do some type of gingivectomy, gingivectomy procedure to be able to do it. So you're thinking, okay, I can get the patient out. I can do a quick little gingivectomy, pull out the laser or electrosurge or whatever you got, make my CEREC crown, be able to send them home in a couple hours and they're good. I don't have to have them come back for another visit, all right? So we do this, we submit it. It comes back from the insurance company and they deny the claim for the gingivectomy, all right? And it's under the guise of you cannot do this on the same day that you perform the crown. It isn't just on the same day. Yeah. You so have to wait 30 days. Yeah, I call up Delta and, and I said- then the tissue's already grown back. Yeah, I said, how long do I have to wait? One day? No. Two days? No. A week? No. Well then how long then? Well, you have to wait 30 days. All right, so and that makes no sense for any of us. It's just terrible. So either way, these are the games, and they try to break you down, all right? All right, so why do we do it? Why do we accept dental insurance? Because people are like, oh my gosh, this is just so frustrating. Why would you even deal with that hassle, all right? Well, it does have some advantages. For me, it was because I came over and started this place after being with doctors that didn't want me there anymore because I was you know, knocking down silver amalgam fillings and fluoride, all right? But it does, I, I was already locked into that model because of who I took over for. But it also helps drive initial growth for a practice to help build trust. It gets patients in your door to pay your bills. Sometimes we need that, all right? So you gotta take a little bit of write-off. That plus, you know, basically people have insurance, especially up in Minnesota. Everybody's got dental, well I shouldn't say everybody, but 99.5% of patients have dental insurance, all right? And so I think that's really critical. Know your marketplace. Um, for those of you that are young and just starting out, know your marketplace. Um, you know, if, if you're not living in a state where about 90% of the people that are walking through your door are carrying a, a dental benefit card, then maybe this isn't so critical. Um, but, you know, like in, uh, in the upper Midwest especially, mm -hmm. uh, it, we would have been hard pressed to do what we've done in the last eight years, certainly, if we hadn't started out yeah, we participating needed insurance in to dental start. benefit plans. So, so I don't want to make them out to be the devil. Just learn how to make them work for you. Mm -hmm. You don't work for them. Okay, so we know with dental insurance, more and more and more states are starting to see this creep in. All right, I've seen it go on the rise. Uh, Griff and I talk all the time because he's in Texas. More and more of this is cropping up in Texas. All right, we see it a lot in Florida because of retirees that are down there. Um, we know that there's this wave coming at us. All right, um, and. A mentor of mine once said, you cannot beat back a storm, but you can use this energy to move you forward, all right? So what we're going to talk about next here, all right, is to create a little bit of a game plan that will help you weather the storm, all right? It's really that simple. We're going to go through this. We only have about five minutes left, all right? So make a game plan, all right? Figure out ways that you can sidestep insurance, all right? You can create a fee for amalgam fillings even though you don't use it. It used to be where you had to submit plans. My UCR fee for amalgam placement is $1,500 per tooth, all right? I don't do silver amalgam, all we right? We seldom make I tell them that's what I state. charge. So, you know, but that affects the UCR for everybody else that does, all right? So it just helps them improve their bottom line. And people don't usually do that, okay? 
create your own procedure codes within your office management software for the unique things that you do do, whether it's ozone, um, rubber dam. Sometimes people will charge for local anesthetic even though you're not supposed to, all right? And insurance companies will make you write it off. But like I have a code all right, that I charge people for rubber dams when we do amalgam removal. I still put all the protective smart uh, product on them, all right, but I have a separate fee, and it's $20 per arch or use, all right. That's not a lot of money, but it covers my expenses, all right, and insurance companies don't even blink at this. They don't even look at it, all right, all right. Treatment plans. Get treatment plans up front for patients. Make sure they know what they're facing. Submit them for pre-estimates so the patient has, a, patient has a general idea what they might have to pay out of pocket. That way they're not surprised when they come in and they get a bill, okay. all right. This is super important, Dr. Green. So re-emphasize, because what is your pet peeve? What's, what do you not like? I would, what, you talking about the you bill? You do not like pre-authorizations. No, not pre-auth. So here again, verbiage is important. Pre-estimates. You only want an estimate. An estimate isn't a guarantee of payment, and every dental insurance company will tell you that. But it is a piece of paper that you can, that you can hand to your patient to say, here's what Delta Dental says they will pay, and here's what you can expect your out-of-pocket to be. You also pull that out when they come in for that crown appointment, so that when you tell them that they owe you $550, they understand why. It's not your rule, it's Delta Dental's rule. So now who's the bad guy? See how that works? All right, so and lastly here, Always make sure that when you're doing a treatment plan, plan for patients, you give them kind of a good, better, best model, all right? Because if you don't, if you walk out of there, an example would be an extraction. If you don't give the patient the option for bone grafting, when they walk out, all right, and they come back and they couldn't do an implant, they can sue you because you didn't give them that option, all right? State of California, I believe they, um, there's, what is it, one out of seven dentists get sued annually because of the fact that they don't give all the options to the patient when they're in there getting their treatment planning. So don't just give them one and then move on to the next patient. Give them some options, okay? Even if it takes a couple extra minutes, all right? All right? You can also work with your insurance providers to renegotiate fees, okay? You can evaluate the plans and then have your exit strategy as to how I'm going to get away from that one because they're ripping me off, okay? You can raise your fees as needed, all right? Most insurance companies will allow five to six percent every year, okay? and then make connections within an insurance company, all right? So that way you can bypass the little guy who's talking on the telephone and get to somebody that matters that can actually make some changes for you. Okay? Provider relations, that's called provider relations. So when you jump on Delta Dental's website or Met, MetLife's website, you're looking for provider relations. And then you find that person and you keep them in your back pocket. Okay, so real quickly here, we're finishing up. I have five simple, five simple tips, all right, to make your practice thrive. And this is my ball game more than it is Heidi's, all right? This is because, Dr. Green's passion. Yeah. This is why it's okay for me to all work right. with him. Thing number one, do not be average, all right? You need to stand out in the crowd compared to every other office that's around you. And some of you have probably heard this before at meetings or from consultants, okay? But it's critical, all right? You also need to practice what you preach, all right? Hold yourself to the same healthy standards your patients are looking for, all right? Because if you're a doctor and you've gone out and you smoked on three heaters and then come in and breathed on a patient who you're trying to get to do a periodontal treatment, yeah, it's not going to weigh too well in their mind, okay? Um, the trust factor, again, building that trust with patients, we talked about it already, but that's a huge thing to get people to say yes, okay? They'll also be a little more accepting of your fee schedule if they appreciate you, okay? Also, make time. Be empathetic for what the patient's situation is, even if it means it takes more time for you to get your job done. And Dr. Green's rushing, but I, just a quick show of hands. A new patient exam. How much time? 90 minutes. Raise your hand. 60 minutes. Okay, I'll challenge all of you that only do 60 minutes to take it to 90. You're going to make a lot more friends that way because it gives you more time with that patient. I can't tell you the number of patients that leave our office and say, I can't believe Dr. Green spent so much time with me. He actually cares, particularly if you're practicing biologic dentistry like we do. All right, I know we got to finish up, Janet. I know we're running close to time here. Um, so let me just go through this real quick and we'll get you guys out of there. Okay, so don't be average, okay? 
I hate that term, all right? You want to be outstanding. Set yourself apart from everybody else that's around you. Create that experience that's different for the patient. These are a couple things that we do in our office. I got it. I did it again. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like that, though. <laughs> yeah. I give patients chapstick in the office. They get it for free. We also have bottled water, and we do No Cavity Club, and we partner with a local uh, uh, a jumping gym, one of those trampoline gyms, and they give us an hour free pass for anybody that gets No Cavities on their report when they come in. So the kids love it, all right? And it generates extra business for this other local company that we work with. So it's really, really nice, okay? The clinic, all right? That's boring. We see that at every hospital we go to, all right? Try to create something that's a little bit more warm and inviting if you can, all right? So you can eliminate that dental office smell. It just drives everybody crazy, like, oh my God, I walked into this, this is terrible, all right? Those are examples, just real quickly, of what we have there. So online presence is big too, all right? These are examples of websites, all right? And I'm going to just jump through these real quick. All right, you have to have a good website, all right? Especially if you have a lot of competitors, all right? Because guess what? That website on the left and that website on the right came out of two different dental offices in the same town five miles apart from each other. Thank you, ProSites. It have, happens all the time. Have something that sets yourself apart. Spend money on a website, okay? It will totally reap benefits for you, okay? All right? Quick little must read, all right? Fred Joyle and I, have, I've known him for many years. I don't do 1-800-DENTIST, all right? But that book is fantastic to get you to pay attention to the little things in your office that make such a difference, okay? We don't do 1-800-DENTIST because of this guy right here. We wouldn't be able to handle the number of patients they could send us. Yeah, so don't be average. Remember, all right, if you guys run with the herd, all right, you're going to step in that, all right? Be the guy in front of the herd. Is that okay? my line? Yeah, that is your line. All right. All right. I bring this up for a reason. All right. You have four average to semi mediocre musicians that are probably some of the richest people in the world right now because they create an experience. And if you've, anybody in this room has ever been to a Kiss concert, you would know that. All right. They are not great musicians. All right. But they create a fun experience. There's no reason why you can't bring this into a dental office. Maybe not the rock star, you don't have to bring Kiss in, but. I think you all get my drift, all right? Create something that's unique and special for your patients, okay? All right? Again, practicing what you preach is important. Make sure you're staying healthy, you're living by healthy lifestyles, and I'm not going to tell you guys what to do. This is my own personal mantra. I try to keep myself fit because it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to sell dentistry, okay? I walk what I talk, okay? Build the trust with patients, okay? All right? That is respect, integrity, ethics, and honesty with patients goes a long way, all right, to get that patient to say yes without even blinking, okay? All right, and it doesn't want to go for me here. And we talked about the 21 visits, okay? Give them all the scenarios so that you don't get yourself in legal trouble later on down the road, all right? And I like the if it were me. They always ask, what would you do if it were you? Tell them, be honest, all right? Don't worry about what their insurance may or may not provide. Tell them what you would do because 99% of the time, they're going to go for that, okay? A good line to use on that one is, the insurance company isn't sitting here next to your chair looking in your mouth. Mm -hmm. We don't care what they think. Yep. All right, make time for them, okay? Don't just brush them off. Don't just rush to the next patient. If you run a few minutes behind, don't worry about it, okay? And don't gouge them for what you do, all right? All right. Most important thing here, and then I'm going to be done, okay? Because I know you want me to get off the stage. Love, and I'm talking to all the doctors in the room right now, all right? I want you to love, all right, your team, all right? What does that stand for, all right? When I say love your team, all right, I want you to listen to them, all right? I want you to observe them. I want you to value them. And then I almost want you to empower them, all right? And if you feel a little bit emblazoned, you can even do a little bit of a love in, all right? Where you actually invest in them as well, all right? What do I mean by invest in them, all right? When you invest in them, give them good salaries, all right? Give them good fringe benefits, okay? Things like, you know, good vacation time. I offer my staff three weeks of vacation time, all right? Why? Because I work them hard when they're in my office. I expect the best out of them. They need to get out of my office every once in a while and chill, all right? So I pay them accordingly for that, okay? All right? So these are just little things that help, 
to be able to boost your production, all right? And again, these are all in your slides, and I'm out of time, basically, to do this, all right? But it's a very, very simple process to be able to work through this, to be able to really get your office to that next level despite using dental insurance, okay? And I have. I have taken that office. This is my new office that's going up next door. We started with 800 patients when I moved. I have over 3,500 right now, okay? I can't keep up. I'm putting up a 15,000 square foot building next door. And I don't say this to toot my own horn. I needed this for growth. It can be done with insurance, all right? And that's proof of it right there, okay? All right. So what will you guys do to distinguish your office from everybody else in the herd come Monday, all right? Because... You don't Bueller. want to be like every other dental office, right? Bueller. Can you hear it? Bueller. Little Bueller. reference back to the 80s there for you. All right. I would much rather see you guys offering this. It's important to note that Dr. Green is also a drummer. Yeah. Those are those mediocre musicians. All right. And that is a show when you go there, all right? Might be. I'm going to shut it down because, you know, they say that if it's too loud, you're too old, all right? Well, I'm, my hearing's going, so either way, we're done. I hope you guys got a little bit out of this. Thank you for letting us run a little Thank bit late, so and I apologize. Not a problem. All right.